in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a sort of generic elephant side. Okay, so that we can add that to our elephant box. Okay, so hopefully you've made the bottom part, you've made the front and back, which is the same part here, and we're on to the side bit. Now, obviously, I've copied the dimensions off here to start with, but I've just not done the outside, and I've not bothered to put the, the eye in. Okay, so if I go to my SolidWorks, it should look like this. I've done it by a 100 by 100 box, and I've said it on the side here that that's 28 across there, and that's 15 across there. Um, obviously, it's underdefined because I've not done that the same with every one of those parts, but I know that all these bits here are kind of connected together, so I don't need to really worry about going from every single one to every single one. Okay, because really I just want this bit here in the middle. Okay, so I've done that. Um, I need to extrude it by 3mm. I'm going to make sure it's flat. Okay, well, what we're doing here is we're going to take this and the extruded version and we're going to import it as a DXF into 2D design. Once we're in 2D design, then we can do our outside shape really easily and we can put the, the holes in really easily as well. Okay, so let's just make sure it's absolutely flat on. So this was on the right side, so that's looking absolutely straight as maximum as it can. I'm going to go right click. And the option I want is export to DXF DWG. So click on there. I need to go to options and just make sure it's ticked on polylines. Now mine was already ticked on there, so yours probably isn't. So make sure it says export all splines as polylines just there, same as mine. Okay. I'm going to give it a name. So actually that's fine, generic side, and go save. Make sure it's on DXF, which it should be anyway, and go save. I'm going to go to annotation view. So on the left hand side, just clicked on annotation view and green tick. It should, after a little second or two, come up as black and white, which it has done, and I go save. Okay, that has now saved that DXF file. So if I go to 2D design and go file import. If I go to the drop down box here, hopefully it should be one of the last files I was working on. There you go. For some reason, mine's always the second one. Don't know. If you can't find it there, then obviously just go through your normal, uh, find your folder structure and see where it was actually put in. Okay. I'm going to say open. You need to be careful here to make sure it says millimeters. Okay. So click on millimeters and then it's just a matter of saying okay. You always get a warning, so just say continue and there it is there. Okay. So I know that these bits here will actually line up. Okay, while I've got it here, I'm just going to select the bits in the middle. So I'll actually select the whole thing. I'm going to say color red. Okay, obviously red is for cut. So that would cut me just a very square um, 100 mil by 100 mil box. And obviously that's a bit boring. So I want to add extra bits and pieces to that. Okay, so to uh, what shall I do first? Okay, first of all, I'm just going to remove this outer line. Now to do that, I'm going to select the whole thing. And I'm going to go Control and E for explode. Okay, it sounds more exciting than it is. All right, but Control and E to explode and just say continue. I should now be able to select, okay, those lines there and just delete them. Okay, so I don't want these bits here because you're going to want to have your own outside shape. All right, obviously I need to keep this and not mess around with this in any way. Okay, so what I can do is I'm just going to highlight those back together and go Control and G. Okay, G for group. So if I move it, it should now move as a whole group. Okay, so now what do I need to do now? Well, now I'll just go online, find a shape that I like the look of. So I looked earlier and I thought this reindeer looked quite cute. So I'm just going to go right click on there, copy image, and into 2D design. I can then paste that in. If it comes out massive, which this one obviously is pretty massive, I'm going to hold down the shift button. And I'm just going to scrub corner and shrink that down. Okay. Now I've obviously got to think that it's going to go over the top of there. Okay. So it probably wants to be a little bit bigger. Okay. Because these squares need to fit into the side of there. So I'm just going to go a little bit bigger. That's probably okay. Now what I need to do is obviously I need to vectorize the image and contour it and then add some circles in. Okay. So let's do that now. So go to bitmap at the top left, down to vectorize, and click on that image. Always go monochrome, and you slide to the right, always a little bit darker than you think, so that looks okay. 
and say OK, OK. All right. Now I'm just going to check the size again. So if I just grab him and put him on top of there. OK, so again, a bit small. So I'm going to hold the shift button down. Let's zoom in a little bit so I can really see what I'm doing. OK, because obviously these holes need to be inside that bit there. So let's make it a little bit bigger. And just checking if they're going to fit. No, it still needs to be a bit bigger, doesn't it? And let's move that across there. So once I've got that so it's the right size. So I've lined this up now and hopefully I've got the, the red. So it's not too close to the edge, but obviously it's still going to be all right. I might go one, one step bigger on that. OK, so I'm just grabbing a corner there. Uh, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. So remember, I'm always holding the shift button down just so I don't kind of compress or squash or make it look strange or anything like that. OK, obviously, I've got to think about where the, the holes are going to be for the bits to cut through to make sure that they're not too far to the edge. That looks pretty good to me. OK, next thing I need to do now is I need to contour around the outside. So on the left hand side of the toolbar, there's the contour option there. I'm going to change that to zero and say OK. Make sure I'm on red, so up here where it says line call, click on call, and go to the red, and say OK, and click the outside. OK, so that will now cut round the outside there, it will cut through these bits here. OK, last thing I will need to do is I need to think about where my circles are going to go for my LEDs. So hold the circle tool down, come across the second one that says draw a circle with a given centre and radius, click on there. The radius that we're after is half the diameter of 6.8, so that's going to be 3.4. Say OK. Again, make sure it's in red. Yep, and now what I can do is hopefully, I'm just going to turn off step lock. That gives me a little bit more flexibility. So hopefully, oh, this should work quite nicely. Actually, I'm going to have one there, one there, and I'll plonk one right through the middle. OK. Now that's done, I'm happy that I've got a red line roll all the way around the outside, that nothing's going to fall off. These bits are going to cut through there, and I've got my holes for my LED. OK, I can now obviously save that, and then I can email that to the laser cutter. When you're emailing to the laser, make sure you open up Outlook. And the laser cutter, the address is L-A-S-E-R-C-U-T-T-E-R. -T -T -E all one word. And if you click on where it says at the top, check names, it should go underlined, and you know it's the right address. Hopefully that's been useful.